Hey, what's up guys? How y'all doing today? Well, baby, if your name is Sean Diddy Combs, it looks like your day of reckoning has finally come. You guys, listen, we got to talk about this and I got some inside tea, baby. Now, hear this out, okay? First of all, how's everybody doing? Um, I hope everybody's doing fine. How are you guys doing? Listen, nobody cares. We'll talk about that later. Y'all, two things. We've been asking when Diddy's final day of reckoning is coming. We've been asking what's taking so long. Baby, I have some inside tea. We have the timeline for Diddy's arrest. Baby, everybody's saying this is guaranteed. But listen, it wasn't just one source. It wasn't just two sources. It was no less than four sources, all from lawyers to legal to news press, saying that the news corps are on high alert. If you guys don't know, Diddy's a monster, an alleged monster, and allegedly he's going to be taken down. Everybody was talking about this whole grand jury, this whole grand jury. The grand jury has been assembled. This ain't no alleged. The grand jury has been assembled. That is 30 to 40 people, okay? The feds have already gotten all the evidence they need. It was confirmed that the raid was the last thing. But get this. But get this. Despite what TMZ might think, despite what Sean Hawley, Jonathan Davis, and Bonnie Sternum might pray, we have confirmation that one of Diddy's freak-off victims has testified before a grand jury. We repeat, one of Diddy's freak-off victims, I'm not going to say whether it's a man or a woman, has testified in front of a grand jury, okay? This is major, you guys. Diddy is going down. There is now going to be a federal trial. As much as they want to go after lawyers, as much as they want to do this, as much as they want to align the breaker, the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, baby, the feds have now gotten involved. What pulled El Chapel down? Southern District of New York. What pulled Jose Maxwell and Jeffrey Epperlater down? Southern District of New York. Who pulled, um, what's the other guy? Throw somebody else's name. Uh, and Harvey Weinstein down. The Southern District of New York. Now, this is no disrespect. I got more information, but let me just say this. This is no disrespect, of course, to uh, the LA feds. Uh, this is no uh, disrespect to the Miami. But the LA feds and Miami feds there's always rumors about like, you know, grease hands, bribery, things getting paid, right? I'm not saying they're compromised because there's a lot of good people that work there, but there's always something that's just like how that happened. However, Diddy's greatest nightmare, the Southern District of New York, that's why they actually import cases to the Southern District of New York. Because so far, when they got you in their sights, baby, ain't no, uh, allegedly, ain't no payoffs, ain't no mountain high enough, ain't no river wide enough to keep them off your A. Y'all, let's get into this. Now, here's the thing. Um, my uh, connections with, right, the news box has said, if you guys don't know what the news box are, it's a collection of lawyers, uh, ba 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 right? Um, we can call them the Royal Rota, the whatever. It doesn't even matter. The news people that are in the know that cover court cases, not the ones that are in Diddy's attorney's pockets, not the ones fighting for clout, not the ones blogging. No shade to blogging because you know what? That's what I do, right? Shout out to all the bloggers, YouTubers, seekers of truth, right? They are saying that, right? The indictment is, in, I'm sorry, his arrest, not indictment, because the indictment's coming. They already have one verified long-term freak-off survivor. It's either Cassie or Little Rod that has actually testified in front of the grand jury. But that's not it. They don't just have that. They have numerous people, and they have a gang of evidence. It's not anymore. Is he going to get indicted? His team is bracing for it. Sean Hawley and all of them are preparing for it. The indictment's coming. Diddy's arrest is guaranteed within the next 30 days. Within the next 30 days. So far, the predictions are blank and brankual and rug trafficking 
and wire fraud. I am waiting on confirmation if there was anything dealing with weapons. Also, and I got to put this out there, and I don't want to start any mess, even though that's what I do for a living, but I joke not to you. There's also been rumors of, and I know it sounds outlandish. We're going to wait to see what it says. There's also been rumors that Diddy has been laundering money for the cartel, right? Oddly enough, I looked at all of Diddy's trademarks and around the time he was accused of money laundering for the cartel, right? Um, it has been shown that he actually applied for a trademark for the Combs cartel. I lie to you not. For the Combs cartel. On top of that, do you know that the landscaping company that Diddy uses along with the... Um, you know, the booby trap that is the uh, blank worker place that he sent Little Rod and them to actually procure. They are rumored to be run by the cartel, right? Specifically, the Mexico cartel. We'll wait to see what pans out on this. This could be why the feds rolled up in their squad deep. When I say that Diddy is alleged to be involved in some dark mess, baby, it's dark mess. Now, they're saying that the arrest, not the indictment, but the arrest is guaranteed to come in the next 30 days. Everybody in the press is saying, are, when I say everybody, the connections I have, right, are on high alert. They got their stories ready. They got this. All they need is the details. They even have like the pictures they're going to use. Let me get my thumbnail ready. However, I talked to my other source and was like, yo, did you hear? Because here, let me just tell y'all something. Y'all know I'm nosy, right? Y'all know I know a lot of people, right? Don't take my word for anything. This is my opinion. Oh, I do need to say, Diddy does say he's 100% um, innocent. He says that he is has done none of these things. Um, he says this is all speculation written by a salacious attorney. He says he would never, ever, 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 ever in a million years do that, right? They were just all having fun. It wasn't nothing illegal about this. Who wouldn't want to have a freak off like the way Cassie described, right? Christian Combs, I don't think he's common it, but I'm sure he maintains his innocence. Just to let you guys know, what I'm reporting is based upon my information and belief um, from various information sources. What the streets are saying, um, court documents, uh, inside sources, and also just my speculation. But I'll let y'all know when that's my opinion, right? Just to let you guys know, okay? So when I actually see is something true, I hear a lot of mess all the time. I do. Again, I'm nosy and I like for people to tell me mess, but also I actually like do research things. And when I hear something, whether it's like, ooh, right? Like, tell me more. Or whether I'm like, what? I always run it by at least three of my sources because yes, the streets can talk and yes, but I literally, for people that I think are on the know, I'll be like, yo, did you hear that like the grand jury is assembled, right? And if one person tells me that, but my other three or four people I talk to are like, I ain't heard that. I'm just like, oh, okay. So maybe, I don't know. So I try not to go out on a ledge too much. But when I say every single source I talk to said, they told me last week that the grand jury was being assembled. They also told me sometime by in May, Diddy was done for. But I waited to say anything because like my other sources are like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Baby. When I say that everybody I talked to said, oh, yeah, they've already had heard testimony. The feds have evidence that they've been compiling for the last 10 years. On top of that, um, th again, the testimony. And they're having a few other people testify. Diddy should have paid Cassie off early, and he should have settled with Little Rod. Again, as much as Diddy's lawyers want to act like Little Rod is cuckoo -cuck for Cocoa Puffs and ain't nothing in this case and he don't got any evidence, which Little Rod's waiting for his uh, his time in a court of law, baby, the feds seem to seem. And as much as TMZ thinks that Little Rod hasn't spoken to the feds and, uh, 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 and 50 cents is like, is he even for real? If he haven't spoken to the feds, why would you listen to TMZ when TMZ, the owner of TMZ, Harvey, who's still actively involved, and Sean Hawley are like this? Why would you listen to that? Of course, well, Little Rod, I think it's fair to say the feds leave no stone unturned and Little Rod is a big stone. 
And unlike Cassie, who was with Diddy, they broke up like what, like um, eight years ago or whatever. And she knows a lot. Don't get me wrong. She knows a lot. Even as far as Diddy with the bang bangs and the firearm and all this other stuff, Little Rod was currently in Diddy's house. He knows where the security systems are. He knows where all the cameras are. He's been in there to pick up his Uber Eats. He's actually said it. Little Rod knows the layout of Diddy's house. To the point of everybody's talking about who's an informant on Diddy. Is Diddy an FBI informant? If I was Diddy's team, I would be looking and be like, is Little Rod an FBI informant? Because everything he said has come to pass. And as much as they keep saying, he ain't got no proof, he ain't got no proof. Baby, does he really need proof when the feds are actually finding this out? But anyway, this is the thing I want to get into. My sort, my second source, and baby, when this comes to pass, y'all going to give me my flowers. Y'all going to give me my flowers. We've been waiting on this. We've been, you know, holding hands, having our grandma, our mimas and prayer circles, doing everything we can. Was I praying for the downfall of a predator? Absolutely. And if anybody had any sense, they would be doing the same thing, baby. We pray for demons to fall around here. Now, has it been proven in a court of law? Diddy is a demon? No, but I believe the uh, all the victims. And I also believe that, you know, <laughs> Diddy should have just given Little Rod his yacht when he had a chance. All that mess he was uh, promising Little Rod, it looks like he won't have to give it to him <laughs> against his will. But all jokes aside, it's supposed to be imminent. The arrest, not the indictment. The indictment, yeah, Diddy. Sean Hawley and Diddy's team has been furiously look working on. However, I went to my other sources, and you guys, this is um, an exclusive, okay? Just give me my flowers when it comes to pass, please. Give me my flowers when it comes to pass. The other source that is even more plugged in on the front line said 30 days. We give it at most 10 days before that man is dog walked by the U.S. Marshals in handcuffs. They said they, and they're not even talking about what's going on with Christian because that's a whole different case. They're talking about what's going to happen to Diddy. So 10 days on the calendars, y'all. So y'all can, listen, so y'all can give me my flowers, okay? If I'm wrong, y'all can come back and be like, T said, what happened? Because y'all know y'all love to do that. Maybe. So 10 days out is uh, the feds. Do they work on the weekends? Let's give it 10 business days, shall we? 10 business days out is the 26th of April. That is 10 business days out. Um, if we look at 30 days out, 30 business days, assuming the feds don't work on the weekends, that is the one, two, three, four. It is May, the give or take a few days, May or 17th is the 30 days out. So we are looking between April 26th and May 17th for you guys to see on TV that Diddy will be in handcuffs being marched out. I repeat, between April 26th at the earliest, um, they said sometime within the next 10 days, but that is the earlier, between April 26th and May 17th, we will see. Diddy, the, they will announce his indictment arrest and he will be formally charged. The charges are currently, again, the charges are all speculation because the grand jury hears a lot of evidence and then they decide what they want. Let's also not forget in the grand jury, the defense, which is Diddy, does not have a right to defend himself. He doesn't have a chance to cut. If you guys don't know what a grand jury is, let me just explain really quick. When they say a grand jury is assembling, that means that they are getting 30 or 40 unbiased people across different race, colors, creed, religion. You know that whole jurisprudence, just child. They bring them in. They sequester them. Sequester means that the grand jury is done in quiet. It also means usually depending on how long the testimony takes. Sometimes it could take one day. Sometimes it can take a week. If it takes more than one day, they put all the grand jury, sequester them. They put them in a hotel or someplace where they're not allowed to use their phones, talk to outside people because it's supposed to be super, super quiet. They do not notify the defense that the grand jury 
is being farmed. They do not notify the defense that people are testifying in the grand jury. Why this came out during gangland times? Because whenever they said, oh, we're trying to press charges, people would end up sleeping with the fishes, you know, doing all this stuff. So it's really for the people that are testifying, the prosecutors, but they also want to make sure that who they think is guilty doesn't get the leg up on them. Now, is it the fairest thing in the world? No, not that the federal government's coming at you. But if you're guilty, baby, they going to get you no matter what. So when the grand jury is um, uh, uh, being formed, right, uh, assembled, they call it assembled, they're searching for the people. Once a grand jury is assembled, meaning they have the people to hear the testimony, what happens is the it's only the prosecutors. Defense doesn't even know it's happening, Right. Um, they get, uh, or they're not supposed to know what happens. The prosecutors get an open audience with the jury. They present all the information they have. They even get people to testify. It has been confirmed to me that at least one of the FO victims have already testified in front of the grand jury. That's how they know that the arrest is coming. Okay. Um, and when I say they, I'm talking about my source is not the person that actually testified, right? It is unclear whether it is Cassie or it is Little Rod. They have actually talked to several of the FO victims. My sources are telling me that Little Rod has 100% talked to the feds. Little Rod has is 100% cooperating with the feds. And Little Rod is the one that probably drew them a diagram of what Diddy's house looks like on a napkin so they could run up in there. So also not forget when Little Rod did his letter Attorney did the letter to the judge and Little Rod did his declaration. If you haven't seen that live, go through. It's a declaration where he outlines everything that he did and puts more information on it. Anyway, it's basically word for word what the feds were saying. But let me get back on point, right? So back to what the grand jury does. So they give their case. They give testimony. The interesting thing with the grand jury that is different from a court of law. In a court of law, you have to prove what you're saying is true. OK, you have to prove the jury has to believe you. You have to prove allegations, which is what you do if a motion become in front of the court, become fact when the jury decides what's true and what's not. In the grand jury, you don't need to offer proof. You don't. Now, you can have testimony just to bring it home, especially if the accusations are really wild. So you want someone to testify in front of the grand jury. Right. Who better than a long term freak off survivor of uh, Diddy to do that? The interesting thing is that when the grand jury decides to indict, their, their, their job is not to decide whether what the prosecutors are saying and the evidence presented, not to decide whether it's true or not. Mm -mm, this is a grand jury. A regular jury decides whether it's true. A grand jury decides on whether, if anything, the prosecution is telling you, if it's proven true in a court of law, do you think there's grounds for an indictment? Do you understand how low a burden of proof that is? If anything that the prosecutors say are true and can be proven in a court of law, do you think that there's grounds to indict? And if the grand jury says yes, then they indict. And then the prosecutor has to prove what they said in front of the grand jury, prove it in a court of law. It is a very, very low level of proof. You just have to sound believable. You just have to sound convincing. And if you say, yeah, Diddy Santa Claus, and then you bring in 20 people that's just like, I was there in the North Pole. He made the rain Rudolph. And Dancer and Prancer have freak offs. He wouldn't stop. He was spiking all like the reindeer feed and it was horrible, right? And you got Rudolph, Dancer and Prancer whatever, it's not the grand jury's responsibility to see, well, I don't know, show us more proof. Was Mrs. Claus there, right? No. The grand jury just says, well, this sounds believable, and I see Rudolph and them crying, and I believe Rudolph, so you know what? Let's take this bad boy to trial, and we'll see what's true. Diddy is done. Diddy's done. Diddy's done. It's no longer whether a grand jury is being assembled. It's no longer whether the indictment is coming. Diddy's arrest is coming. They're saying the only thing, and again, I'm going to give y'all time frame, and this don't happen in that time frame, give or take three business days, right? We are looking at April 26th to the 17th 
of May. It is going to happen somewhere in that time frame. The longest I got was they're looking at it within the next 30 days. Now, I do not know if the feds, um, um, I do not know if the feds uh, work arrest on uh, weekends. So we're doing business days. 30 business days is around May 17th. Uh, 10 business days, which is the shortest time frame I've seen. And this is somebody even more in the know. It is happening sometime on around April 26th. Diddy's time is coming. They are saying that Diddy's team has been furiously trying to work for the criminal defense. The media is on high alert. People are coming fast. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. You guys wanted justice. You guys wanted held accountable. You said, how come the victims are speaking to the feds? How come they just, not y'all, but the people that, how come they just in civil court? What's going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shut up. It's finally happening. It's finally happening. And now we go and see what's what. Now, another interesting thing that my sources were telling me that I'm sharing with you guys is the fact that, remember how everybody was saying, why has everybody been so quiet except for Stevie Day, J, Young Miami, Daphne, and also that person, Jay, talking about, we just had an unconventional relationship. <laughs> okay, I hope so. I know the IRS is looking into it. I hope so. The interesting thing about that is a lot of people have been being very, very, very quiet because one, they're trying to see what's going on with Diddy and if they're going to be sucked into it. Two, when they heard that Diddy had secret cameras all around the house and recorded video and audio, everything that went down, they got scared because a lot of these people, every, almost everybody was recorded illegally and without their knowledge. If you guys don't know, um, I don't know if this is going to come up with the grand jury charges, but this, it could be viewed at as revenge P, illegally recording, illegal making of P, right? Do you see what I'm saying? So they want to know what they're on tapes. They know what they're doing and they're probably scared. Do the feds know? Spoiler alert, the feds raid it. They have everything. They know everything. So maybe you might as well forget about that. But the thing is, they were saying that a lot of key people have not offered their support and they're being very, very quiet is because they too have been questioned by the feds. They have been questioned. Now it's unclear if any celebrities actually testified before the grand jury, but outside of a few free call victims, however, they have been questioned by the feds. Everybody of notoriety that showed up in those tapes they are saying that the feds left no stone unturned. A lot of people are saying that the reason they are being so quiet with what's going on with Diddy is the fact that, baby, people are trying to cut plea deals. People are trying to save their image. People are trying to save their career. The same way in Jeffrey Epstein, when there were legal documents, it was redacted one, redacted two, people boarded the plane, redacted one, redacted two, redacted 26. They want their names redacted. They are hoping that they can separate themselves enough by providing enough information that the feds absolutely 100% will not ruin their reputation, will not come after their business, will not do this and that if they can provide enough information. Now, what the federal prosecutor uh, chooses to do, that's their business. It does, it, it does stand to notice that they've always said, Feds are not like the state and local police. The state and local police or law enforcement, they raid first to get evidence to build their case. The feds raid last. By the time the feds raid, they have everything they need, okay? They're just going to see chef's kiss cherry on top if they can pull anything back in. That was the whole point of this. A lot of stuff in the raid was confirmed. A lot of Diddy's powerful friends, and I mean like his, I'm not talking about the billionaires, right? More on that later. I'm trying to find out more information about what's going on with the billionaires that like funded all this, right? Lucian Grange, allegedly, all this stuff, right? We are talking about the people that are on Diddy's levels, like the Amy, let's, for instance, Amy Schumer, remember in the amended complaint or whatever, it was a famous comedian that was on his boat uh, in Christian's complaint, a famous woman comedian that was on Diddy's boat, uh, the vic victory uh, during uh, the, what is it, the festival, which is the uh, yachting season uh, for the St. Bart's and like whatever. 
at where Christian Colm is alleged to have assaulted that girl, J uh, Gracie, uh, that woman is Amy Schumer. How do we know that? We went to Amy's Instagram feed and she was looking so happy, talking about one of my favorite people and tag Diddy. She has not removed that post yet. I'm guessing Amy Schumer is one of the people that they're looking at. Um, also, Jerry Seinfeld's wife, she was throwing a charity event. Now, I'm not implying that they were involved in the freak offs. They were involved in anything crazy. I am saying that they were on the yacht. Their names, uh, they're hoping to stay out of it and keep things redacted, I would imagine. But there's more. Let me go through uh, my notes of what the streets are saying so we uh, can get into that. Um, let's see. Oh, also, did you guys know that the feds uncovered that Diddy has been banned uh, from numerous yacht co companies, right? They said it started when he broke Kim's nose, the way it appeared as if he was blanketing, uh, trafficking women um, in certain situations. Um, all this crazy stuff that happens on Diddy's yachts. Um, they are saying that this yacht company, that, that stuff that happened with Gracie, it wasn't Diddy's first yacht company. And he has been banned from a number of yachts for the debauchery that happens. But the first one company that refused to charter to him anymore was when he broke uh, Kim's nose. Um, anyway, um, it is funny that Little Rod's amended complaint falls exactly online with what the feds actually did at Diddy's property. Let's also not forget that the, his, the amended complaint was, I think, dropped into the courts 24 hours before Diddy's house actually got raided, even down to Brendan being the mule. Um, they're saying Diddy has ties. He has ties. Now, this is alleged. I have to put that out there. This is alleged. The federal indictment. We'll see how much they could actually prove. Diddy has ties to the Mexico cartel. Let's also for not forget that the booby trap is alleged to have ties to the Mexican uh, cartel too. Um, they, his business dealings, right? Uh, where it is washing money, getting sponsorship, whatever you want to tell, but it comes from people that maybe you don't want to actually brag about. The people that are said to have business ties with Diddy and alleged to getting that money through, Jay-Z, fabulous. Soldier Boy, French Montana, and of course, Rick Ross. Rick Ross's baby's mom was actually on, uh, went on a rant talking about Rick Ross was at the free golfs. Rick Ross was down with everything Diddy did, why he acted. That's why, Shane, that's why you treat women so bad because you don't like women. Again, has this been proven in a court of law? No. Will, when Diddy is arrested, the feds feel like they can prove Everything in the indictment in a court of law, hell yeah. They are very confident against this case. They think it is going to be a groundbreaking case that is going to send echoes through Hollywood, echoes through the music industry. And they are also saying that Diddy himself, right? Oh, so this is like some tea I got off of. Listen, I'm just spilling all the tea. I was going to make this into separate videos, but F it. Y'all here now and y'all going to hear this, right? Um, they are saying that people are saying that Diddy is very, very down about this. Him looking like a maniac riding a bike and getting people to take pictures. Again, it's unclear whether he's delusional or not. They are saying that he is not in a good place mentally. But honestly, I don't know who would be if I was facing this mess. Again, you can do whatever you want to your sinkiopaths and Stevie J's and this and that. In the court of public opinion, it is done. You are never going to come back from this. As a matter of fact, you could he could take a lesson from OJ. OJ at one time was one of the most beloved athletes in America by white, black, brown, green, Puerto Rican, Asian, Haitian, whatever you want. He was one of the most beloved. The mess that happened with Nicole uh, uh, Simpson, right? It completely destroyed his legacy. We're not arguing on whether he did it or not. It doesn't matter. It completely destroyed. It doesn't matter right now. It completely destroyed his legacy. And OJ died at 76. One of the greatest athletes in notoriety, fame, being beloved, died in shame, abandoned a pariah. People are saying that that is when, if Diddy gets to 76, that is going to be his best case scenario. Dying as a pariah, completely um, abandoned by his thing. Side note, I'm going to go off on this tangent. Did y'all see Caitlyn Jenner tweeting about OJ? 
talking about some good riddance, right? When OJ passed away. And the thing is, I'm not defending OJ, but I really have to say the goal, the goal, the goal that Caitlyn Jenner, someone that had to pay $800,000 to the family of a 69-year-old woman because he was, I believe, texting or not paying, sorry, she was, I believe, texting or not paying attention on her phone. And Caitlyn Jenner rammed her car, caused a collision that ended up taking the 69-year-old woman's life. Caitlyn, you also took the life of somebody's loved one. And you have the nerve to be treating about OJ when you yourself has murked someone. You yourself will probably be standing next. And you were able to leverage, the streets are saying, Chris's connections so that you just paid 800000 That's it to the family. And you got the nerve to be sitting up on Twitter talking your edge. Baby, there is a warm place in hell for you too. There's a warm place in hell too for you too. But anyway, let me get back into what the streets are saying. I just couldn't believe the caucasity of Caitlyn Jenner to be doing that stuff. I said, never. I know Caitlyn is a she, but baby, he, she got the audacity of uh, 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 the entitled rich, white, heterosexual male, the caucasity, if you will. Anyway, right? Lawrence Green, thank you so much. <laughs> you said, let's call it the three T's. T says tea time. I hear y'all don't like the title tells. Let me know in the comments what you want to change the name to. And baby, you know I aim to please. This is a group of all of us, right? I'm not naming y'all. Y'all can name, y'all can change my name if y'all want. The three T's. Uh, Black Gold 347 said, you're excellent at what you do, Miss T. Said, thank you so much, Black Gold. And thank you for the super chat, Lawrence and Black Gold. Tony Tone, thank you so much for the super sticker. Also, Nate, DJB, thank you, said, hey, Tisa tells, baby. Thank you so much, Nate, for the super chat. Two snaps and a point. Uh, uh, or is it in a point? Yeah, two snaps and a point. Uh, thank you for the super chat. You said Tisa, Wendy Williams, and Jaguar Wright. Uh, thank you so much for the super chat. Call me Emmy. Thank you so much for the super sticker. KT Woods, thank you so much for the super chat. Said, hey, Tisa, keep your foot on Diddy and his people's necks. I've seen a picture of him with big meat. Baby, Diddy. We, I can go into stories about him and big meat and what they did to Wolf and all this other stuff. Anyway, uh, Cody Co 39 said, take that, take that. They'll be taking Diddy. Baby, the arrest is imminent. We're not talking about an indictment anymore. The arrest is coming. You had the time frame. If it doesn't happen, y'all can come back and be like, Tisa Brokay, what happened? Because baby, I will stand 10 toes down on this. Also, Maja Keys, thank you so much for the super chat. Said, have you listened to all about the Benjamins lately? Listen to Biggest Verse, speaking on Belize activity. Didn't I tell you that they had something going on in Belize? Listen, we gonna see. And really quick, I just saw how chapped my lips are. Let me, this matte lipstick be having me in a chokehold. My lips be like, please. I love matte lipstick, but my lips are like, not today. Not the F today. Guess I need to drink more water. Anyway, y'all. Um, hold on. Oh, Kim Short, thank you so much for becoming a member. Diane Nelson, thank you so much for this uh, super sticker. I appreciate you. And Jessica Pope, thank you so much for joining the YouTube membership. Y'all are spoiling me. I appreciate that so much. Okay, let's get back into this and I'm going to start reading um, the uh, comments. Okay, so also this is... Let's play make-believe, right? Let's play make-believe. In a, in a parallel world, well, we are Earth 1, we'll call it Earth 2. Um, they are said that the feds in the raid actually found um, a tape of Tyrese, Diddy, and Ray J all running a choo-choo on Cassie, right? Um, there are third-party businesses, uh, what, some of them, Southwest Roofing, Yuma, Arizona, um, extensive contracts to do landscaping and whatnot. Diddy has taken out loans on all his businesses. He's trying to pull as much cash as he can, right? Interesting enough, they said that Rick Ross and Wingstops, Wingstops is one of the companies he's taken loans out on. 
A lot of people think that Rick Ross owns Wingstops. Apparently, that is just Diddy's company. Rick Ross is just a minority owner and the face of it. But they are saying that Rick Ross's Wingstops, he does not, in fact, own Wingstops. That is Diddy's company. They're saying all of Diddy's companies, and along with some of the people listed, are washing money for the, basically, right? They're even saying the revolt money was sent uh, uh, was sent to third parties, blah, 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 blah. Um, again, I want to see where this actually lies, because I've heard a lot of stuff about the way Jay-Z is mixed up with it. Again, that is speculation. We're going to have to see what happens with the Carters, but this lawsuit, I'm sorry, not lawsuit, because that's civil, this federal criminal indictment, this arrest that is going to happen imminently that everybody is on high alert about, baby, it's going to pull down a lot of people, the music industry, and a lot of your prayers. They are saying it is a billion dollar business. We talk about these billionaires. It is a billion dollar business. The cover up is actually uh, continuing. More importantly, you think you think Nisa is going to post some more stuff about a mama lion growling over her young? And don't get me wrong, I'm not clowning Nisa because, of course, you're going to want to protect your children. And of course, she looks at Christian like a son, too. I get the motherly instinct to want to protect your pride, protect your pack. But this goes back into what everybody is saying. What are you doing letting your sons go into business? This would be like Misa doing this if her sons work for Jeffrey Epilator, right? Um, right? What do you, like, what are you doing if you actually don't think, right? What are you doing if you're mad that your sons are getting caught up in all this, but your sons are actually in the middle of this? Again, Misa did tweet last year, how long is everybody going to act? Like, there ain't, like they don't know what's going on and there ain't nothing wrong with you. I'm paraphrasing, but I believe she said something very close to that. She actually told us last year there was something seriously wrong with Diddy and that he pulled everybody to hell and she wasn't going to let Justin get pulled to hell. Baby, how funny that in a year's time, Justin was so deep in with his father right? Lucifer Incorporated, that now she has no choice but to toe the line with Diddy and basically by proxy protect Diddy because Diddy don't care, give a damn about Justin or Christian. My sources are saying that Diddy knew about this lawsuit for a while. My sources are saying that Diddy made an active choice not to give anybody a heads up, not to settle with anybody, not to do anything to keep his kids out of it. This is a choice Diddy made. Again, questionable choices because I don't know why he made that choice with uh I don't know why he made that choice with Cassie. So it's questionable choices. But again, it is what it is. I want to say really oh Deanna Glasgow, thank you for being a member for one mom. She said, love you, Tisa. Keep giving us a dish. Thank you, Deanna. Um, also Epsa, uh, Epsa May LLL 777 or 777. Thank you so much for the super sticker. Tamara Waters, thank you so much for becoming a member. Lefty Lieber 76. Oh, thank you so much for the super sticker. Y'all really be blessing me. Thank you. Deanna Glasgow, thank you so much for a super sticker. Maja Key said, Is that why Tyrese is speaking out in support of Diddy? Makes me wonder who all he has on tape. People are saying that Diddy was literally like, the entertainment, Jeffrey Epilator. They're saying at this point, it is who didn't, did he have on tape? Who didn't? And remember how Little, Little Rod said, Diddy was always trying to get Adam and he woke up with two women and Diddy and him. And Diddy looking at him like starry eyes, Good morning, sunshine, boop, right? He was like, boop, how you doing, honey? What's going on, you want some breakfast? We ordered Duncan, what you want, right? Literally taking orders for the Uber Eats delivery to come. We already know that. Um, again, look at everybody that's come out and supported Diddy. Everybody that's come out and supported Diddy. 
The people that you see supporting him, baby, they're wrapped up in it one way or the next. Let's also not forget that Ray J was deep into that. Let's also not forget the rumors of Ray J that he had his own little agency of people that you pass around for a fee. Let's also not forget that Ray J has his own thing going on. Now, we will wait for the actual arrest and charges to find out what's going on, but everybody is on high alert. You have the time frame. Let's see what happens. Y'all come back and be like, T-Say, you was wrong. Baby, you won't see what's wrong. Anyway, Precious One, thank you so much for uh, the super sticker. Blur Line said, you're the bomb. I try to spread your videos everywhere. Thank you so much. Even made a Reddit and a TikTok to share them. Thank you so much, Blur Lines. I appreciate that. And thank you for the super chat. Also, you guys, there's 9,520 people in this live. Let me see how many likes I got. Now, let me close my eyes because usually y'all play the F out of me. And whenever there can be 3,000 people in my live and I will literally have 21 likes. And then when I go look at it, it goes down to 19. Y'all take your likes. So let's see. Let's see if y'all are having a YouTube freak off or if y'all show me love. Because if you do, it really helps my channel grow. Okay. Now, some of y'all might be like, B, we don't like your flow. We don't like your delivery. We ain't helping you nothing. Take your like back now. But everybody else that's rocking with me, let's see. It's the moment of truth. Hold on. Let me check the likes. Um, Hold on. Let's see. How many likes are there? Drum roll, please. I don't know. I can't refresh the screen. Hold on. How many likes do we have so far? <sighs> wow, I have 2,525 likes. Y'all, thank you. Y'all showing me love today. Usually, usually y'all be playing the mess out of me. It's like a very toxic relationship, but I can't quit y'all. I can't quit y'all. Thank you so much, Blurt Lines, and thank you for everybody to hit that like button. Truth Saber, thank you so much for the super chat, said, I'm gonna need you in the courtroom, T, said, nobody does it better. Yo. I was actually thinking of when the federal trial does happen, me being in the courtroom. But then I'm like, oh no, y'all know me. I'm a lover, not a fighter, baby. I'm like, how much would I have to do to get security, right? And then like, y'all know me. Yeah, laugh if y'all want. Y'all know me. I'm like, security. I'm Please, uh-uh, security. Oh, girl, child. security. Y'all know me. I ain't, mm -mm. I ain't scoring up with anyone. I'm be like, yes, I would like armed security. Can they carry machetes and AK 47s? I believe that I feel that. Please, what y'all got? Y'all got, y'all got. Listen, y'all mercenaries, perfect. Y'all gods of war, even better. Bring them in. Yes. If anybody even boop, bumps into me, let that chopper sing. Do what you can, protect me. I don't care how much I got to pay, right? Because honestly, and I'm not even joking, I'm about to get back more into the stuff I've heard. Um, Diddy, by everyone's account, is in, if the allegations can be believed to be true, Diddy does maintain his innocence. Nothing has either been confirmed or disproved in the court of law, okay? Um, Diddy will have his day in court, and you never know, he might beat the case. <laughs> When's the last time you heard the federal government coming after someone? and them beating the case. Harvey Weinstein couldn't even do it. And baby, Harvey Weinstein was more powerful and connected than Diddy. Um, Jeffrey Epilator, Giselle Maxwell, uh, Giselle Max, Maxine, whatever, couldn't do it. And they are way more connected and had way more money than Diddy did. So <laughs> good luck with that. I know Diddy's lawyers, I think what happened was they had a plan, right? They had a plan. This is just my opinion. They had a plan. Cassie, we settled with, right? And that's Douglas Wigmore. We can't mess with him because he is an old white lawyer and he's been doing this for 50 years. But Tyrone Blackburn, he's a young black lawyer. And we can kind of craft the narrative and use anti-black sentiment, racism, and just also the snobby elitism that sometimes happens with I'm not saying everybody, but you know, they were trying to wage that. And they thought that all they had to do was just somehow not even discredit, but make the public not care, right? And they, that's all they had to worry about. Light work, light work, right? Light work, no reaction, light work. Until the feds got involved. I think their little plan might've even worked. But now that the feds are involved, little Rod and all those Jane Doe's, they don't even have to prove anything in court. Why? Because the feds are going through it. Because you know, when you go through discovery, it's very, very costly. It's not like, oh, give me your phone records. 
People hide shit all the time, wouldn't you, right? So you have to not only get the records, but you have to pay someone to go through the records, but you have to pay like private eyes to find things. You have to pay experts, forensic. It's very, very costly. And if you don't have that money, you're not getting the evidence. Just because the judge says, give them everything you have, right? That's like somebody demanding, give me your phone when you know you've been texting somebody. You're like, mm, 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 what phone? Woo! Throwing that mess in the toilet. Rather have a short circuit than someone uh, throwing the phone out on the freeway, right? So my point of the matter is, so it becomes very, very costly for discovery. And a lot of victims that might not have an unlimited budget for discovery, that's when you actually subpoena, do this, do that. They kind of lose in court or they don't have to strong them because they know, but they don't have the money to pay someone and go find it. The federal government has an unlimited uh, fund. And baby, the federal government, anybody knows, once they own your ASS, baby, literally, the only person that probably will ever not go, like, will ever not be at the Fed's mercy is the Lord and Savior himself, because, you know, it's light work for him. But honestly, uh, when you get into it, with all these cases, all they have to do is just sit back, let the feds do all the research. Let the feds do all the discovery. Let the feds do all the su subpoenas. And whatever the feds will undoubtedly prove in court in front of a lawyer, in front of a court of law, you can then go and take whatever was proven in that court of law with the feds, and you can hop, skip, and jump and bring that into your case. And now, if Diddy's convicted of blank trafficking, if Diddy's convicted of blank, if Diddy's convicted of this, if Diddy's convicted of that, now Little Rod doesn't have to prove that D Diddy had blank workers. Now Little Rod, let's say the feds are like, yeah, and you were trafficking underage people, right? Now Little Rod don't got to prove, no, these girls were underage. These girls, they don't got to do that. All they have to do is, your honor, and he's already been proven in a court of law to be a convicted blank trafficker, to be a convicted drug trafficker, to be a convicted blank of under eight, whatever is proven in the federal case, right? Whatever is proven in the federal case, you don't have to prove it anymore. You just bring it into the civil court and be like, this was already proven in the court of law. So this convicted blankist, this conflicted trafficker, this convicted person use their power. And also, let's also not forget wire fraud might also be in it too, because the, as much as everybody wants to say they want little blank workers, right? How were you getting paid? Were you getting paid from these anonymous companies in Germany and in Italy doing wire transfers? Were you being paid with this? What was your work? It's not easy. It's not, it's not hard for an unlimited investigative team to actually prove that you were involved in that stuff at all. As much as people think they're too slick, you're only slick when they're not looking at you. Once the seeing eye of Horus turns and zooms in on you, baby, it's a done deal. It's just like the seeing eye of Horus, right? Once they on you, they are on you. This makes, as much as they want to clown Tyrone Blackburn, baby, this makes his case so much easier, even for the feds to share some of the evidence with them. This makes his case so much easier. It makes everybody's case so much easier. And Diddy's lawyers know that. They scramble them right now. Baby, I don't, and this is the one thing I don't understand because y'all can debate this, but I'm really curious, right? Diddy's lawyers really, I don't know if they really thought this PR campaign was going to work. To me, it hasn't been working because, but me, I, everything they say, I'm like, I, mm, mm, yeah, whatever, baby, what's in a court of law, right? Again, we'll see. They could have their day in court and prove, be proven victorious. Um, But did they really think this was going to work? Or was, did he just so full of delusion and he was paying them and they was just taking his money? Which one was it? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Anyway, let me get back into this. Nicole Harris, thank you so much for the super chat. You said Bruce can talk about OJ when he grows back at... Y'all, why ask the new ex-husband about the old ex-husband, Rob K's best friend, OJ? That was very, very petty. And you know what else it was? If you felt... It was also cowardly. 
Because if you, she was such a good friend to you and you felt so strongly, why weren't you tweeting about that every day? I would have respected him more if from jump, he was always shading the F out of OJ. From jump, he was always making that a thing. He never was. But now when he's gone and, oh, and isn't it funny? And again, this isn't in defense of OJ, but isn't it funny that once OJ was off this earth and couldn't clap back and let people know what was really going on with Bruce and Chris and all this other stuff, ain't it funny? Then he's like, good riddance. But you were sitting there on mute while this man was alive. And you said he did something to a good friend. Again, it was very cowardly. Because you waited until OJ couldn't clap back with any of your secrets and what you did. Because don't forget, OJ was right there where Chris Jenner was young, wild, and free, and thirsty. And baby, he was right there. And he knows all your secrets, Bruce Jenner, too. And Bruce Jenner knew that. That's why he sat there on mute. That's what I mean. This is my opinion. But when people do stuff like that, you waited until the person finally is just off this earth to start clapping. What did you want us to know, Caitlin? Again, he knew Bruce Jenner, right? We know Caitlyn. Caitlyn, what didn't you want us to know about Bruce Jenner? Because OJ was there and maybe ev he, everybody was trying to get on his good side. He knew the tea about you, your wifey, and everything else y'all was into. And that's why I think he didn't have anything to say. Anyway, call me Emmy. Thank you so much. You said mute Sean Cole's boycott Wingstop. Baby, American Girl said, thank you so much for the super chat, right? Call me Emmy. I would say that, but I think the U.S. government has made it illegal to boycott people. But if people don't want to eat Wingstop, because that allegedly is one of Diddy's actual companies, then baby, do what you need to. Because I think the hood places be having better uh, uh, six-piece lemon pepper all flat with some fries. And maybe if you feel like getting jiggy with it, putting some salt, pepper, ketchup, and cheese on those fries. I'm just saying, right? With some grape soda. Um, you know, what did Jennifer Lopez says? If you know, you know, right? Get you a, a Welch's grape soda. Mwah, chef's kiss. Anyway, or, or, or a mug root beer, please. That's like the nectar of the gods. American Girl said, I've always been in the background. I've always been a in the background watcher, but for the but this is for the hilarious no Nurple, Prancer, Rudolph, and Mrs. Claus analogy. I'm dying. Thank you so much, American girl. Happy. Thank you so much for the super chat. You're saying T for T. T says for T is a good name because we stopped by for the T. I think that's actually really cute too. Thank you. Black Gold 347 said, T said, did you see that you were mentioned in Crazy Days and Nights Blind Item? <laughs> Please. Thank you so much, Black Gold. Please let it be a good one. Because Crazy Days... Oh, Lord. What do crazy days and nights say about me? Well, I have a pretty clean life. Like, y'all ain't never going to hear no weird mess about me. I'll tell you that much. I'll tell you that much. Y'all ain't never going to hear any weird mess. I'm not saying I've been an angel, but baby, you ain't hearing about me being one of the disciples of hell, baby. Lawrence Green said, Diddy can only hear his ego, inner demons, and money. I agree. Kimberly Mars Barnes said, said um, First of all, thank you for being a member for 25 months. Said just a shame that he's po he was has possibly groomed his sons to be like him. Thanks, Tisa, for being amazing. Thank you so much, Kimberly. Listen, that is the sad thing. But at the end of the day, I will say this. And again, nothing's been proven in the court of laws. Allegations, speculation. Uh, uh, uh. People. How do I say this without coming off as judgy? Because I'm not holier than thou. Everybody wants to make money. Everybody wants to give their family a good life. Everybody wants to be around people that can benefit them in one way or the other, right? Like you not being friends with someone that just sucks your soul every time you're around them. You want to be people that make you feel happy, free, all this other stuff. I will say that I think that a lot of people with um, Diddy, they just saw the money. And I think, in my opinion, if these allegations are true, People like Diddy, they seduce and they control people with promises of money, people with promises of opportunity. Pe like he's a gin. I said this before. He is a gin. Genies are like cleaned up version. Gins are the ones that give you your desires, but, but somehow screw you over and take your soul. Diddy seduced people with their hopes, their dreams, their aspirations, and he got off on putting pushing people's boundaries and morals. Again, 
I know that everybody wants to believe he is the world's greatest father because for some reason in America, we live in a patriarchal society. We will be quick to believe that a mother wasn't ish and messed up their kids. You say somebody was a bad mother. They are, people are like, yep, yep, yep. People are very quick to believe that. And as well, they should. There are bad mothers, admittedly. But for some reason, because we're a patriarchy society, in my opinion, patriarch, a society, and people want to hold on to this thing that as long as there's a man in the child's life and he's present, that child could be president. They could be the next astronaut. They could be whatever they wanted without discounting the fact that people are just very reticent to believe that a male who was around his children or anyone could be a toxic influence. You see what I'm saying? And the, they want to believe that, yes, yeah, somebody might beat their girlfriends, cheat on their girlfriends, sell perversion and debauchery. Because I was thinking about Young Miami and Diddy's game, Carisha Roulette. And the same way the Mercers, I believe, had a card game that showed how the powerful and elite, I believe that Carisha Roulette, now looking back on that, uh, was a way of Diddy trying to, what's my mic in? It was a way of Diddy trying to normalize freak offs. You know, there's always this theory that people that are in the very perverse things, one of the things they want to do is they want to have it out in the open. They want everybody to accept. It's a very human thing and something that's very deep in psychology that every human wants to be accepted on their own terms. It's the way you see people cheating and you're like, or like, why didn't you just keep that in the shadows? But for some reason, they need to hold hands as they walk into Dunkin' Donuts. They need to sit in a public restaurant because people need to be seen and heard. It is a very quintessential basic human need. Everything, when it comes to personality disorders, within reason, right, is down to people feeling like they are not seen and they are not properly heard. And from that, right, the, the throat chakra being blocked and all this other stuff, that's where a lot of like disorders come from. That's when a lot of perversion comes from. And again, I do think that if you think about Carisha Roulette, it was nothing but a card game that would get a freak off started. Even the way you had to either answer or take shots. It was a very heavy drinking game. And they advertised it with De, De Leon liquor. I think this was Diddy really wanted to bring freak offs to the mainstream. You know what they were doing in the back thing? He wanted that to become. And it was working for a while. The act bad. This that he was literally making freak offs his whole personality. I think he had been around so many people accepting the freak offs that you're just like, yo, there's something very weird, even to the fact that people doing things after they taking shots and shots and shots and shots of alcohol. I do believe that once somebody passes a point of return, no, like, but anyway, we're not getting into that, right? Um, but my to get back to my point, I believe that people were so desperate to believe that Diddy even though everybody knew about him doing this, having a temper, doing this, beating this, doing that again. Oh, but he's a good father. No, the same way people treat people is the way they'll eventually treat you. Now they might need different circumstances, but baby, they go and get you caught up in that stuff. It's very rare that people put this gate down mentally. And it's just like, no, not my children. This was, if the allegations can be believed, Diddy's family business. So why wasn't the kids a part of it? You know, thank you so much, Kimberly Barnes. Also, mixed chick Samantha said, What do you think about Jack Rob Wright saying that Tina Knowles sold Bay to Jay-Z saying Jay's worse than Diddy? People just saying so much, and I want to know the truth. I'll tell you the truth. I do know that Jay-Z allegedly started dating Beyonce when she was 15. If that, I don't know that for a fact. I've heard the rumors. I, I I don't know, because I'll be honest with you, back then, Jay-Z wasn't even really trying to claim Beyonce. It, he was, I don't know. I don't, I, I know that there's a reason it took them 10 years to get married. I know that in the beginning, it doesn't make sense that she was sold to Jay-Z because Jay-Z was like, Beyonce was going through a lot with Jay-Z because she wasn't Beyonce that we know now. And Jay-Z was the bigger star back then. So I don't know. We'll wait to see. Maybe this federal indictment's coming on. Well, uh, listen, Jaguar knows what she knows. I, she's, I, you see what I'm saying? I can't really speak on that.
whether it's true or not. But I have heard the rumors. But again, Jaguar comes from a different angle. She's been in the music industry. She's done whatever. I haven't heard exactly what she said about it to speak on it, but yeah. OH, thank you so much for the super sticker. Uh, uh, Deneva Shelton, thank you so much for the super sticker. K Cash Vegas said, what about the what about the others who are quiet? Who's next? Baby, people are saying that they're quiet because they don't want to see if their name can be redacted or they actually want to see um, uh, if they can get a plea deal of some way or somehow like stay out of it. There's a reason why everybody's staying so quiet. The feds weren't just interviewing freak off workers. Again, this will be one of the biggest cases that the feds have actually unraveled. Um, uh, uh, listen, uh, misc, uh, to call all day. Thank you so much for the super sticker. Fleshette, uh, Plushette or Fleshette? Uh, Robertson said, Tisa, you're definitely, you're definitely our CNN, NBC, ABC breaking hot news with that pretty straight hair. Do oh, thank you. Y'all like the, y'all like the half wig. Thank you so much, guys. Y'all know I ain't never taken, leave it to you, tell a comb or a heat to my hair. Anyway, Junkin Mama said, uh, when you sell your soul to the devil, he always collects always. But what did Cat Williams said, which I actually thought was really good. And that says about people that are into debauchery, the Devil can't create blessings, not even for his own people. Only God can create blessings. And when I first heard it, people are like, how can you say that? Like, look at this person getting this, look at that. But that's because we're looking on the outside. Our modern society, I know I'm about to get on my soapbox, has tricked us in believing because this is the rise of like narcissistic people winning. It has tricked us to believing that as long as you got that watch, that car, that, uh, that whatever, that yacht, you win in life. As long as you fly in private, false. And don't get me wrong. If I could have all that without selling my soul or my anything else, right, that I value, of course. And somebody said, what you want to do, work at Burger King or you want a private jet? Yeah, I'll take the private jet. No shade to anybody who works at Burger King. Do what you got to do, right? Right? Get in. We all get it how we live it, right? Of course, somebody will want a soft life. But the thing is, we have been conditioned from Instagram and stuff to think that just because we see it, oh, there must be something. You must be living that life. When they say the devil cannot create blessings for anyone, we assume that all that money and all those things are blessings. But when you look closer, I'm talking about not the people that they are God's blessings, but I'm talking about the people that sold whatever to get it. When you look closer, it no longer looks like blessings. It looks like entrapments of the soul. It looks like like snakes crawling around as they swarm around your body, squeezing tighter and tighter and tighter until they reach your neck. Again, we're the ones that look and like, look at that blessing, look at that blessing. But the people inside know that ain't a, that ain't a blessing and that wasn't created by God. So again, the devil cannot, like Pat Williams said, he cannot create blessings for anyone not even his own disciples. Okay. Look at the girls that like have to be porta potties in Dubai. Look at the boys that got to do be porta potties in Dubai. Look at this. Look at that. Look at the people that did all that to come out ahead just to find out they have uh, some type of cancer stuff. And I'm not saying that like sickness, because again, it's a complicated world, but you get what I'm saying, right? He always comes to collect, baby, always. Uh, A-T-W-O-L said, we need to start calling peace, Sean. And Combs P said that no one dares to call him Sean besides his mom. I don't revere Sean. Diddy refers to daddy. Oh, that is true. Where did he get that Diddy refers? He said, nobody dares call him Sean. Baby, everybody in cell block four going to be calling him Sean. He going to be like, literally, he going to be reenacting, call me by your name. Anyway. Two snaps and a point said, dun, 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 diddy. Dun, 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 dun. Bum, what a bum, bum. What a bum, bum, dear. Bum, bum. Okay, anyway. Wait, Angela Hardick, thank you so much for the uh, super chat. And also two snaps and a point. Thank you so much. Raquel said, thank you, Tisa, for taking time. Is it Raquel or Rachel? Said, thank you, Tisa, for taking time to research to provide us some legit information. You are awesome. Thank you so much, Raquel, or Rachel, as it was. Maja Key said, Bruce needs to respect OJ's decision to be uh, innocent, just like uh, Caitlin wants to be referenced as she, her. Y'all, please don't get me struck. We, baby, 
love who you love. It's all good. We respect everything. Us dragging Caitlyn don't got nothing to do with uh, her pronouns. It has everything to do with Caitlyn being an unrepentant piece of ish, in my opinion, right? I don't, listen, we don't have to attack people's life choices or pronouns, right, Maja? At the end of the day, we can drag Caitlyn for being an unrepentant piece of ish. And according to what I think, a horrible father. Crystal Cove, thank you so much for the super chat, said HSI's roll call for Diddy. I <laughs> This is good. Crystal Cole said, this is Homeland Security's, right? Investigators, uh, roll call for Diddy. IRS here, DEA, present, ATF, roger that. FBI, yeah, we're here. <laughs> C CID in the UK, here, love, Interpol, yep. <laughs> now this is divine humor because, baby, that is Homeland Security's investigations roll call. IRS here, DA, President, ATF, Roger that. FBI, yeah, we're here. CID in the UK, here, love. Interval, yep, we all here. Amy Simmons, thank you so much for the super chat. Tracy Davis said, T says, my first time in the chat. Diddy is definitely going down. Wondering if his mom is included in all of this. Thank you, Tracy. I think right now, from what I'm hearing, the way his mom is included in all of this, um, is the fact that she is, um, she owns a lot of his businesses. I don't know if she's included in any of the freak offs. I do think it's odd that little Rod did say that some of Diddy's sons participated in freak offs with him. And I do think it's odd that like, uh, uh, Christian was doing a rap to Cassie's me and you when he decided allegedly, according to Gracie, to insult, uh, assault uh, Gracie on the yacht. Um, and I think it's odd that at the time, because Diddy owns Cassie's music, right, to me and you, or I think he does. I, don't quote me on that one, because I think Cassie might have gotten her master's back, but I don't know, right? Um, I think it's very odd that at the time, Diddy was actively negotiating with or was it? Maybe not. I had my timeline mixed up. I think it's odd that he was having freak offs to me and you. Diddy was, and you have your son. Uh, um, you have your son rapping over it. It's just odd. It's weird. It's weird. You know. Um, uh, oh, House of Glam. What's up, Jamie? Said Feds know how to find you. They came to my door at ten a.m. asking me about Portia and her lover R. Kelly. Y'all pay attention. Jamie is dropping some tea. She said, feds know how to find you. They came to my door at 10 a.m. in the morning asking me about Portia and her lover, R. Kelly, over some emails and texts from over 15 years ago. They already knew the answers before they even asked me a question. The feds will speak with everyone. Thank you, girl, for backing me up. And I've heard the feds have spoken to everybody got to get up on the beat oh, oh, oh. everybody got to okay fine i'll get back to work ron ron gilliams said keep dropping dimes on them love your tea said thank you so much for the super chat ron uh ron and thank you house of glam for the super chat kimberly masters said thank you for becoming a youtube member essel Lynn's son said tisa doesn't participate in pre calls she just pours the tea on them that's right you ain't never gonna hear about me in any mess on that Put, put that on my mama, on my hood. Y'all ain't never going to hear about that mess. Sorry, baby. I'm not saying I'm an angel, but baby, <laughs> ain't no way. Ain't no MF and way. Um, oh, so here's the thing. Jamie also has an interesting theory where she said, I think Misa knows what she hears or what she is told. This is in relation to Ms. Misa kind of protecting Diddy by pro proxy. When she left him, she left him. And she can't stop her grown son from being with him. That's true. He probably only calls his mom when he's in trouble, meaning when the public will find out. I'm sure Justin and Misa talk every day, but at this point, she just needs needs not to judge him. Go get him and protect him to the fullest. That's true. Y'all, listen. Me, Bethel, said... Happy Friday. Happy Friday, TT. I went to Howard University with Diddy, and back then he was in the clubs in D.C. dancing like kid and play. <laughs> His rep was always suspect. Yo, that's crazy. 
But, well, I guess there were no cam uh, phone cameras back then. I would love to see Diddy going, hola, hola, eh, hola, hola, eh. Remember, have y'all seen this movie, House Party? Roll the cut, right? Anyway, Law to Dot, thank you so much for, and the super chat said, have you heard anything um, regarding Jay-Z and Beyonce? I'm not going to lie. I have heard stuff. Not with anything about Beyonce's mom's son or anything like that, because from what I can tell, like, I haven't heard anything like that. I have heard, and I said it again, that everybody was taught, rumored that Beyonce and Jay-Z were getting a divorce because they were quietly separating assets. I've heard that as 100% false, they are not getting a divorce. They were quietly separating assets because the feds have been snooping around for a while. Jay-Z. It's all up and down through Diddy's business deals. They have business together. Beyonce does not want her money, her businesses at all affected from what's coming down the road. Now, will they be able to separate assets quick enough? What is going to happen? We saw the way Beyonce and Jay-Z were like, we don't know him to Kanye. Um, so I know they had no problem cutting ties with Diddy. Let's also not forget that Jay-Z's Made in America festival was canceled in 2023 around the first uh, the beginning of the year well the first quarter of the year that was after Diddy received Cassie's lawsuit if you guys don't know we found about Cassie's lawsuit in November Cassie actually started negotiations with Diddy all the way in the first quarter Diddy messed up because he thought that Cassie only wanted money not justice and he was treating in my opinion Cassie like she was the same little 19 year old that he could stay, keep doped up and coked up and do whatever he wanted to her. And she didn't have a voice and her throat chakra was blocked. Like he treated her like she was the Cassie when she was 19 and all the stuff. And he, to a certain point, thought he knew her because he's known her for 10 years. But it's sad that that was who he knew Cassie to be for the whole time and the way he judged her. And he didn't realize either his arrogance, stupidity, or maybe bad legal advice that Cassie was now a woman in her 30s with two children and a husband that loves her and supports her and friends and family. And she wasn't that same little girl that he was able to use and abuse. He played it all wrong. He misjudged with his arrogance. And look what happened, right? But Cassie's lawsuit was going on. So uh, oddly enough, maybe it was just weird timing, but Jay-Z canceled his Made in America festival, which is weird because Jay Made in America was one of the biggest concerts. I think the only concert that was huge happening in the Northeast. It was going to probably become bigger than Coachella. The Northeast doesn't really have a festival like the way the West Coast was. That's why Made in America was such a moneymaker. Cut two, right? Also, around that time with the Grammys, the Carters always had that Grammy brunch, pre-Grammy brunch or whatever. They canceled it that year. Now, do we know why they canceled? No, just like we can't actually say why they uh, uh, canceled Made in America. But let's also not forget around that time, the Grammys are like, we don't know if he's here, want them there. Clive Davis is like, well, he's invited with me and my man. Thank you to my man. And, uh, you know, you know, he's like literally, I feel like whatever Clive knows that Diddy's coming over, he just puts on some Luther. Put on the red dress and some of this sweet perfume. I'm going to make love to you. I just feel like he got, or is that, who sings my, my, my? Is that Luther? No, that ain't Luther Vandress. Is it? I don't know. My mom used to always have that playing. Anyway, she was a big Luther fan, right? Especially like dance with my father. I could dance, dance with my father. Anyway, um, uh, my whole point is, so they canceled the pre-Grammy. A lot of people said they canceled because they didn't know how to tell Diddy he wasn't invited. And they didn't know to be playing because, again, Jay-Z got a lot of business with them. Okay? Now, cut to Made in America 2. If you guys know, that was just canceled for the second day in a row. What happened? So we have Made in America, Cassie, around Cassie's lawsuit. Coincidence? Maybe. We have, after the whole thing with the Grammys and blah, 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 the brunch for no reason is canceled. Okay, that's weird. Made in America for the second year in a row was canceled. What happened? Diddy got hit with the Little Rod's lawsuit. His lawyers were like, light work. We can handle this. Except for 
the house got raided, the federal, the federal raid, right? And then Christian's case. And that's where Made in America was canceled again for the second year. Well, Christian's case, I think, came after the cancellation, but definitely the federal raid. And then magically, Made in America was also canceled for the second year in a row. Now, again, this could just all be coincidence, but also, yeah, could be coincidence. So we'll see. Thank you so much, Law, for the super chat. Jamie Overstreet said, Tisa, you're the best and your content is better. Oh, my God. Thank you for the super chat. And thank you, Jamie. Um, Kimberly Master said, what's done in the dark will come to light. Karma needs to see you, uh, what's about, needs for you to see what's about to happen. Again, what a cat said, the devil can't create blessings for anyone, not even his own people. Again, K. Lauren Lee, thank you so much for the super sticker. And Kimberly, thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, F Fuzzy Cat Talk Podcast said, his mama was a pimpette. Listen. That is the only thing that would shock me because I'll be honest with y'all. I have not heard, besides his mom having businesses in her name, I have not heard one thing about his mom being involved. I really haven't. Now, that's not to say she's not. I just haven't heard one thing about his mama being involved in all those antics, you know? Uh, Lindsay uh, Padovan, thank you so much for uh, the super chat. Angelica Vasquez, what's up, Angelica said, thank you for the super chat. First of all, I said, I think that Diddy's mom is involved, involved him as FOs as a child. He hates women and said he would blank his own mom. Remember him showing uh, off her fresh dip? Now, listen, I don't know about the child stuff. I really honestly don't. And those are like, I would just hope that's not true. I actually think Diddy might have gotten involved when he was in like the billionaire set. Like he's in, like the perversion just went crazy. Does he hate women? Um, he did say he would blank his own mom, according to little rod. Uh, I do remember that weird video. It's on my channel where she was showing off. He was showing off her fresh set and Janice got, he literally was like, look at my mom, how bad she is. And she's like, yeah, I got two hands down, pow, pow, pow. And I was like, this is weird. But, um, uh, she became when he was panning and she became visibly uncomfortable when he zoomed in on her white nails. And she was like, what are you doing? She became visibly uncomfortable, visibly. Um, Diddy's a weird one. Tamia 20 said, hey, now, Tisa, you're showing your age. They know nothing about that house party. What are you talking about? We just watched House Party two years ago with Kit and Play. Y'all don't run. Y'all don't watch classics. No. Y'all need to get into the classics. School Days with Tisha Campbell, House Party. What else? Like, who's the people with crisscross jump, jump, right? Y'all don't be watching classics. We were watching, well, anyway, I, you have to in some, well, anyway, it doesn't matter. Anyway, Tamia, thank you so much. Y'all better start watching these classics. Coming to America, y'all better get into this mess. Mixed chick Samantha said, imagine doing his strip search, looking for booty plugs and Lord knows what else. Yuck. I know that's right. Francine Linus Cameron said, don't forget Diddy was a background dancer for a father MC. Yeah. Here's the thing. I kind of feel like at Diddy's early career, he might've had the inclination for freak offs. Right. But I don't exactly know if he had the power and opportunity to do it. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't know if he had the power and opportunity to do that. And that's what makes me just be like, I don't know. It's like a little bit, it's a little bit weird. It's a little bit weird. Anyway, let me get to the rest of this. And I'm going to tell y'all what else I know, because I know I'm keeping y'all here for a while, but I'm just doing a grand dump. If you know what I'm saying, hold on. And not in a ditty way. I mean, in a way of like, I'm dumping documents. We got to be particular when the white finger now. I'll say one thing and I've said it once and I've said it twice. Ladies and gents, whatever you prefer, we should be very, very thankful that uh, Diddy is about to, uh, the arrest is imminent. It is a, it is a foregone conclusion. I'm telling y'all, but y'all can come back and tell me if it doesn't and be like, whatever. But all my sources are saying it is pretty much guaranteed um the uh we can now reclaim uh we can now reclaim um 
white fingernail polish. It is ours again. We will be popping off. We will reclaim white fingernail polish. He shall not take that from us for any reason. Let me get back into the super chat and then let me spill the other mess that we got to say, because baby, this one is going to be a doozy. Let's get into it. All right. So who else are we on? Um, uh, let's see. Uh, Snoop will pack. Thank you so much for the super sticker. Okay. So let's get into this. Shall we? Shall we? Shall we? Let's MF and go. Um, uh, here's the thing. Somebody said, Jamie said, what made Diddy play it wrong with little Rod? Was it because he felt he had videos on him like he has on everyone else? Because the way he tried to play little Rod, like he wasn't serious and unbelievable. Again, this is just my speculation. Everybody is saying of who's a federal informant, we need to actually look at little Rod and ask, has he been working for the feds for a while? Again, the feds have had an ongoing com uh, conversation, but you make a good point. Maybe he felt like because he had tapes on little Rod like everybody else that he could just disrespect him. Because at the end of the day, little Rod said he would go away quietly if he just paid him the money for the love album. And did he refuse to pay? Which actually, if you think about it with UMG saying that like, well, anyway, I'm not getting into that. But yeah, it just makes you think. Hmm. Okay, let's get back into this other mess. Um... Hold on. Uh, I just got some stuff. Are you following this Dennis Portia Simon Gabodia thing? Should I start reporting on it? I feel vindicated. And it's gotten a little boring, but that's because Portia is like letting Simon like run circles around her. But we can talk about that later. Anyway, let me know in the comments. Put one in the comments if you want me to do some videos and start call, uh start uh, following Porsche's divorce to Simon. Okay. Um, okay. They're saying that this is one step. They're saying that this is a global investigation. A lot of stuff happened on yachts. Another stuff happened overseas. You guys know that. Um, one thing that's unclear that people I'm getting conflicting is whether or not there was wiretappings uh, going on uh, with that before the raid, if they are wiretapping. I'm 100% sure that they got everything tapped up now. Again, they're trying to make it look like a windshot, but if you focus on the evidence, it is 100% pointing uh, to what's going on. Diddy thinks prior to that that he was protected by the NDAs, but we already know about the NDAs. They are for civil things they might hold up, but if somebody is breaking the law, they do not protect at all. His reign of terror is over. The one thing that I have been hearing a lot is people are looking to see who's going to be able to cut a plea deal. They are saying that a lot of people want plea deals. However, the feds only give you a plea deal if you give them something that they cannot do or cannot say uh, for themselves. Brandon right now um, is looking at 10 to 15 years mandatory if he is convicted of any type of trafficking or even as a conspirator, co conspirator to trafficking. Christina Corum, Santella, all those people are going down with the ship. Unfortunately, if his sons participated at all, at all, at all, they are also going. These go back to the RICO charges, right? There's Aaron Dreyer is doing whatever he can. To, that's Diddy's other attorney. I think at this point he has one, two, three, four. Jonathan Aaron. Yeah, he has four attorneys at the moment. They're all gearing up. People are saying that Diddy is paying for everybody else's attorneys for the defenses. Again, I don't really know if this is just like a weird legal strategy or if they're just taking Diddy's money and they know, you know, they got to do what they got to do. Um, you guys already know Cassie will be called to testify. Um, the thing is, several of the freak out victims have actually testified in front of the grand jury. Um, yeah, listen, some people are wondering why Little Rod is doing this. People are saying that when you think about it, Little Rod was already blacklisted 
seriously. Let's also not forget that Diddy people have rumored, have a habit of if you leave him and you don't give him what you want, he will blacklist you. He will make sure nobody works with you. So even before Little Rod filed this lawsuit, Diddy literally uh, allegedly tried to finish him because he didn't even, he was mad that Little Rod dare even ask for money, right? Little Rod speaking his truth, even if he doesn't get any money, right? Um, even if he doesn't get any money, it doesn't matter. He feels perhaps did he ruin his reputation, his career? Um, you know, uh, again, all the victims hope that the voices will be heard. Uh, they are using drugs and alcohol as coping mechanism. There's gaps in recall. Of course, that will be normal. Um, they are saying again, nobody is the perfect victim, but everybody is a victim. Um, Again, what can you say? I will just say this and leave this that. He had private planes, private yachts. They were on international waters, which is outside of the U.S. jurisdictions, right? Private islands, homes in California, New York, and whatever, right? The use of hundreds of hidden cameras uh, and hours of evidence, right? He really is going down. Diddy's team has a strong feeling it's coming down. Um, yeah. Yeah. The team doesn't, anyway, yeah, you guys, people are saying this is going to be really, really far reaching. Uh, and everybody that had something to do with it, if they don't cut a plea down till down, there's rumors that Brandon is trying to cut a plea deal. Brandon, this will be the time. If Brandon's family is watching, now will be a time to approach the feds and see what you can do. Because baby, you went from being what? A 25 year old former basketball, a college basketball player to now someone that Diddy will gladly throw under the bus. I know a lot of people are scared to go against Diddy, because at the end of the day, he holds a lot of power. You don't have this type of alleged reign of terror for years. However, baby, Goliath is falling. Get in where you fit in. Don't be a young Miami standing by your man, literally showing that you are so broke. You have that Goliath is going down and you somehow going to stand out because you think by playing the fool, you're going to end up getting that bag, baby. Ain't no, it's OJ dying in disgrace. Good luck with everything else. TP, thank you so much for the super sticker. Said Tisa, unfortunately, this sort of perversion is pervasive and endemic in the entertainment industry and just the tip of the iceberg. You're right about that. Mitch Shik Samantha said, What about the talent show before? Let us find out Diddy and Khalid were recruiting. Oh, wow. Let us find out Diddy and Khalid were recruiting in our face. I know that's right. Snoop Will Pax, thank you so much for the super chat again. Said, When this hit the fan and go to trial, I hope it's on court TV. Ashton, Crispy, please, more names. They've been dropping. It's going to say something crazy. The names I've heard, I'm not going to drop until Diddy's actually arrested because I want to see who the feds put in their complaint because you know the feds. They be like, if they're complaining about Tyrone Blackburn's uh, complaint being salacious, Baby, just wait till the feds. The feds gonna be reading like every soap opera you ever soap opera, telenovela, K drama. You heard it all. Uh, S. Kojo flips it. T. you the truth. Sending love from London, England. Thank you, thank you, Gubna. That was that was my London ex accent. Shut up. Don't drag me. I try. How about said every English person can do an American accent, but Americans have such a hard time doing English. At least me. Ariam said, Little Rod, a.k.a. Little Raid. I know that's right, Aram. I, Aram, I know that's right. Little, we're going to change Little Rod's name to Little Raid. TMZ talk about, we're told Little Rod wasn't involved. And 50 Cent's talking about, you think he made this up? Are y'all dumb? Anyway, I know Diddy's team was hoping he wasn't involved in that. But wishing and hoping ain't doing nothing. Um, Dread Maga said, Arkham Asylum is Coming Diddler. I know that's right. Uh, Snoop will pack. Thank you so much for the super chat again. Said also, what about Tupac and the biggest situation? We can't get the, we can't uh, forget the Keith D effect on Diddy. I know that's right so much. Dread Maga, thank you so much again for the super chat. I appreciate that. Snoop will pack. There's so much that Diddy has been coming. It's like karma literally said, literally eyes focus. And also SON, thank you so much for the super sticker. I appreciate it very, very much. And Monique Ellen, thank you so much for the super sticker. Anyway, you guys, listen, 
It's been fun. I'll probably try to drop one more video about Jonathan Adi. I know everybody's been talking about him, but you guys, if you haven't watched my Jonathan Adi playlist, please go watch it. You know, I've been investigating. I found out some more tea and baby, you know what? And I, I, I know sometimes I'm people's mood board. So I want to break the tea first before everybody starts talking about it. Okay. I promise you either today or tomorrow, I'm going to drop a Jonathan Adi video, but baby, it's going to be worth it. It's going to be worth it. Anyway, y'all, thank you so much for joining. Alexa, thank you so much for becoming a member. I appreciate that. You guys, thank you so much. And I will see you tomorrow. I'll try to go live tomorrow, okay? But don't worry. Look out for the Jonathan Otto video. I got y'all. And it's not just about the interrogation that we were the first to break on YouTube. It is about more. And I think it's tied up with Diddy's current situation, okay? Oh, really quick. Don't leave. Joby Joe said, be careful of trends. Bunch of girls shaved off their hair because of Cassie not knowing she was being bopped upside the head and probably hated the style. I feel like Diddy diddled little Rod. Neck and in bed. Listen, the sad part is, yeah. Yeah. That's what I said. It was the sad part is, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Agreed. Agreed, agreed. All right, y'all. I'll uh yeah, just I'm dropping videos. Okay. Talk to y'all later. Bye.